I believe that at one point in time, that lukewarm Christianity will be a thing of the past. The Word of God tells us what we can expect in different generations. And so they're trying to shut out the church. They're trying to conform the church to the way of the world. When our enemy says they're coming for us, they mean it. It's judgment. It's judgment. It's God's judgment upon America. People aren't waking up to that there's a judgment coming. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Revelation in the News. I'm your host, Zach Drew. I'm Sasha Bowles. And I'm Andrew Bellers. Evil is advancing in America, and Christians are taking a back seat. You know, Christians once had a say in the direction that this country was heading. The direction that the pulpits were facing is the direction that America would go. And if Christians are taking a back seat, that doesn't mean that the devil is sitting this one out. You see, this country, it needs a miracle, a complete revival centered on repenting from our ways and repenting from our ways and turning back to Jesus. That is the only thing that can completely turn this country around. And we need to be praying for that. Pray for revival, people. But in the meantime... While we are praying for revival, we can also make educated decisions. We can make logical and good decisions when it comes to voting in the direction that this country needs to go. Pray for revival. But that doesn't just give us an excuse to cast off all responsibility Mm -hmm. and just let the country go to hell. It's like people are so disheartened Mm -hmm. by what's happening in the political arena. I know... Christians, conservative Christians that are so disheartened that they're saying, you know what, we're just not going to even vote in November. Mm -hmm. And once again, I would say, have you lost your minds? Mm -hmm. Well, what do you tell people when they're thinking that there's some, there's basically one bad or there's another bad. And what do we do at this point? Because I don't want to have anything to do with it. I don't want to vote for the wrong one and say my vote is going towards one point of Um, just one point of evil. Well, here's the thing. This is how democracy works in America. Mm -hmm. I mean, the two candidates, whether it's it's probably going to be Hillary Clinton and and Donald Trump, that's the way it's looking. How democracy works in America is we're going to be voting in one or the other. No matter if you like one or don't like one or you hate both of them or like you were saying, both of them are evil, Zach, so I'm not just going to vote at all. Mm. So if this is how democracy works, I believe that if you don't vote in November, it's a sin. Those who know the good they ought to do and do not do it is sin. Have you lost your minds when you think about what was America like the last eight years? Just because you're disheartened by the political scene, are you gonna stay home and hand the keys of the White House to Hillary Clinton? I mean, it's just another eight years of President Obama. People have forgotten what the last eight years years would be like. So your, your case, Sasha, about the two evils. First of all, I don't necessarily agree that one is horribly evil and the other one is evil as well. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, we all have made mistakes. But are you being serious whenever you honestly believe that it's just a wash? Mm-hmm. If, if Donald Trump is elected or Hillary Clinton is elected, do you honestly believe it's just a wash? Have we forgotten what the last eight years of America looked like? I know, you know, you and I were talking about this right. earlier, Andrew, and you've got to ask yourself the tough questions. The last eight years of America, what was that like? Can we expect that for the next eight more years? If Hillary Clinton selected you bet. Are you okay with homosexuality being legalized? Are you okay with our government trying to ban semi-automatic weapons, and if, honestly, we, if they had their way, they'd ban all weapons. They would, absolutely. And I'm, I'm not okay with it. Yeah. The thing is that America, <clears throat> America, if you look at what America looked like, even when I was a kid, that's what's insane to me, mm-hmm. that I know that uh, my grandparents, uh, even my dad will say, America's not the nation that it was when I was a kid. And, you know, that may have been 40 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, that may have been... Uh, 60 years ago. But I think what's 
really shocking is that America's not even the same nation it was when I was a kid. I remember uh, the attacks on the Twin Towers and 9 11. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember, um, I, I was only nine years old, and I remember what America looked like. I remember the patriotism. I remember people rushing into the church. I remember that there was moral good, there was moral wrong. You know, there was, there was white and black, there was, there was, you know, good and bad. And that has been erased now. That doesn't exist in our country anymore. But, and that's just, you know, yeah. that's just 15 years ago. But there's been such an acceleration. Yes. I mean, uh, yes, so it's been, it's been an acceleration from 2001 to, you know, 2008. And, and, and I mean, it's always been an acceleration of, of evil, but it's exponential, Absolutely. And we'd be blind not to see that. <sighs> Do you think that our relationship with Israel has strengthened in the past eight years? Absolutely not. But it's interesting to note that our relationship with Iran has. Hmm. Are you okay with the national debt being increased eight trillion dollars under one president? Eight trillion dollars under one president. Are you okay with men being in the little girl's room and even in our schools now? See, I'm trying to make a point here. If we hand the keys to the White House, Hillary Clinton, we just have another eight more years of this. Are you prepared for that? You know, talking about the the gun laws, Andrew, I, I recently was listening to our friend Rick Wiles, and he said, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of a little a joke. He's like, you know, it's yeah. kind of interesting that it seems like the left is forcing this country into a civil war. But what they don't realize is that it's us that have all the guns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of an interesting <laughs> little catch-22 that's a, there. That's a funny statement. That is. You know, talking about even the, recently, let's get into the news here mm. about uh, men being allowed to go into the little girl's room and even taking that into schools. What's happening in the news this week, Andrew? I have an article here from Fox News uh, that says, Conservatives outraged, rightly so, conservatives outraged over Obama transgender directive to public schools. It says, The Obama administration's directive Friday that every public school provide transgender access or face the loss of federal funds drew swift and strong condemnation from conservatives with one public official blasting it as presidential blackmail. The administration's directive, citing Title IX and telling schools to give transgender students access to all activities and facilities consistent with their gender identity, effectively touched off a national debate that could well extend into the next president's term and reverberate through the courts. I think this wow. is the most shocking it is. Uh, thing for, for this presidency, even more so than, than homosexual marriage. You know, I was talking to Sasha before the show, mm-hmm. and I was saying, you know, we deal a lot with the news. We do the Revelation, the news show, and we also do uh, the Jim Baker show. Sasha and I are co-hosts for that. And so we deal with the news all the time, for hours every single day. Uh, and uh, this was probably the, one of the most shocking articles that I had read in the past probably two or three months. Right. Where it says, while the letter, so Obama is sending a letter, this current administration that if you don't vote, you're willing for just another eight years of this. While he is sending every single public school in America a letter, and while the letter does not have the force of law, it does warn the schools, it's threatening the schools, Mm. that do not abide by the administration's interpretation of civil rights under this Title IX law. They may face lawsuits and loss of federal aid. What do you think about this, Sasha? Honestly, that's, it's just crazy to think that you're basically, as the president, you're forcing every school to come up with this decision of, do you want to continue having a thriving school, or can you just abide by the law, which is going against what most of the school's foundation believes, is that boys go to the boys' bathroom, girls go to the girls' bathroom. But now that they're forcing this upon the schools and basically taking away their money, it's really crazy to think that this is the America mm-hmm. we live in. I, it is crazy, and I think what's kind of funny is that uh, that the administration would say, this isn't a law. You know, this is just, uh, this is just a suggestion. Uh, we, we think that you should do this. Um, but if you don't do it, you could face lawsuits. Exactly. So how is it not a law? But if we don't exactly. do it, 
we could face lawsuits. It doesn't make any sense at all. You know, we're being forced. We're being forced, and I'm going to sound like a, a broken record here. We're being forced to draw a line in the sand. You know, this, the opportunity, the convenience of lukewarm Christianity is disappearing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, it's like a, a lot of people that even I, I'm s- surrounded by that are, are great people. They were never forced to actually have an opinion on some of these issues. That whenever they would, right. you know, whenever they, these issues would come up, they would just be like, oh, well, it's over there. It's over here. It's, it's isolated incidences. Well, now it's throughout all of America, and it's forcing us to make decisions. It's yeah. forcing us to either say, I'm on that side, or I'm on this side. Are you going to stand for the principles of the word? Are you going to follow Jesus and what he says? I mean, I even know uh, recently... We had uh, on the Jim Bicker show uh, a few weeks ago, General Jerry Boykin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot's been happening with him that he was fired. And some of the things are, are taking place that Andrew's going to tell us about. Right. But he was fired from a college because of his stance, which is simply the word of God's stance. This isn't Jerry Boykin's, General Jerry Boykin's opinion. This is Jesus's opinion, which you and I, are ambassadors of his kingdom. Right. It's not our laws. It's not our principles. It's not our opinions. It's his. We're simply just ambassadors. And whenever we go forth simply being good ambassadors, promoting what the Lord promotes, and we're getting fired because of that in America today, yeah. it's unreal. And it's happening more and more. I mean, we keep hearing stories of this coming out recently, just in the past couple of weeks. Uh, here's the article from Charisma. It says, Jerry Boykin... Fired for his opposition to President Obama's transgender mandate. The article says U.S. Army Lieutenant General William Jerry Boykin is best known for his work with the Family Research Council. But until Tuesday, his day job had been as the Wheat Visiting Professor in Leadership in the Department of Government and Foreign Affairs at Hampton Sydney College in Virginia. It used to be his day job, used to be, because the college affiliated with the Presbyterian Church uh, fired him after fiery mm. comments he made in opposition to the Obama administration's transgender mandate to the public schools. And really, this came as a result of uh, the LGBT community not liking his comments and pressuring the school exactly. and saying, wow. we want him fired. We're mm-hmm. offended by the things that he said, mm-hmm. and he should not be teaching uh, young adults. He shouldn't be in that position. And what's, what's strange is that it is a school that's affiliated with the church, with the Presbyterian church. Wow. So it's, it's, they know that the school is affiliated with the church. Yeah. They know what the church stands on, and they don't care. They want them gone. Well, I was happy to read this article today. As was I. And the article says, um, college reverses, it's from Fox News. Mm-hmm. It says, college reverses decision rehires famed Delta Force hero. It says, when given the choice of standing alongside a decorated military hero or a bunch of militant LGBT activists, choose wisely. It says, the leadership of Hampton Sydney College learned that lesson the hard way. It says, the Virginia all-male college had chosen not to renew retired Lieutenant Jerry Boykin's contract, which is what we just read, that they, essentially, they they fired him. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it says, less than six hours later, the college reversed this decision and offered the retired general a one-year contract. So it sounds like uh, maybe they were convicted by the Holy Spirit. They thought it over, and they realized that this wasn't the best decision. Mm. But we're going to see more of this yes. as we go into the future because uh, the views that we hold are not the popular view. We're going to be seen as bigots. People are going to hate us. And we're not only going to see people of faith being uh, fired in secular positions, but I think even in ministerial positions Mm -hmm. where where even churches are going to hold views to say, you know, we we don't want intolerance in our church. We don't want this. So because you stand on the views of the Bible and of God's word, Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want you here anymore. 100%. This has already happened in history. Whenever the German Christian church under Nazi... uh, the Nazi regime under Hitler, the true church, the confessing church, had to break away from the mainline denominational churches. Yes. Essentially, they had to go underground. It was called the confessing church. It was led by Martin Niemöller and Diedrich Bonhoeffer and many others. And they took a stand. 
they're willing to, because you had the mainline denominational church that could stay above ground. But why? Right. Because they agreed with everything that the government was putting on them. They right. agreed with them. And they said, yes, we're going to follow your mandates. We're going to follow your doctrine, so to speak, rather than the doctrine of the word of God. But the true church had to break away. And I believe that we could honestly see that in America. And I believe that at some point in time in the future when the Antichrist system is in full force, mm -hmm. that's how the entire church is going to be. But are you willing to take a stand? Mm. There are some people that are taking a stand right now. I know Rabbi Jonathan Kahn recently took a stand. And we're going to be playing that video here in just a minute. But what we have seen these things like Jerry Boykin being fired for his stances, what we have seen that eight years ago? No, I don't believe we would have. No. Yes, it's increasing, but it's increasing exponentially. And while we pray for revival, God, send down revival. Let us repent of our ways. Let our country turn back to Jesus. But while we are praying for revival, it doesn't mean that we can just sit back and do absolutely nothing. Right. We still need to make educated, logical decisions. And even come November, we need to make educated, logical decisions. We read this article recently. Trump is the presumptive nominee, so where do Never Trumpers go now? We spoke to some leading voices, and this is what they're saying. I think Never Trump supporters stay right where they are, Red State contributing editor Ben Howe told The Blaze. It's always been about stopping Trump and nothing else. Some, some also supported Cruz. Some also supported Rubio. The only unifying theme was that Trump had to be stopped. That doesn't change with Cruz dropping out. Ultimately, according to how the Never Trump movement is singularly focused on stopping the billionaire businessman, no matter the consequences, mm -hmm. and that, well, at least they know what they're doing, right? I mean, they, they, they acknowledged, they said, no matter the consequences. And what is the consequences? It says what the consequences are, including handing Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton the keys to the White House. This is from The Blaze. Really, Howe said, we're just trying to prevent a Trump presidency with full awareness that the other consequences would replace that uh, with, you know, Hillary becoming president, for instance. Mm. Okay, so like we read at the beginning of today's show, where is my outline? Are you okay with homosexuality being legalized? Are you okay with our government trying to ban semiotic weapons? Are you okay with our relationship of Israel decreasing the last eight years? Are you okay with the national debt being increased by $8 trillion under this president? Are you okay with men being in little girls' bathroom? Well, if you're uh, Ben Howe, yes, you are. Wow. And if you're in Ben Howe's camp, yes, you are. You are not considering the consequences. And if you are considering the consequences, then you are okay with the massive exponential acceleration for the next four to eight years. But some people are taking a stand. Amen. Amen. Here's a, an article from CNS News. Messianic rabbi, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn at the U.S. Capitol. He says, where did Supreme Court get the authority to strike down God's law on marriage? Someone is speaking. Mm. Are you? At a Christian prayer event in the U.S. Capitol's uh, Saturday Hall, uh, Statuary Hall, Messianic Rabbi Jonathan Kahn said Israel and America were founded on God's calling. Mm -hmm. But that America today is driving God out of its public squares. And that in legalizing homosexual marriage, the Supreme Court had overruled the laws of the God Almighty. Where did they get that authority? Let's run this video of a man taking a stand. Here's Messianic Rabbi. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. Only two civilizations came into existence on the solitary foundation that God's calling and purpose was the reason. The first was Israel, the second was America. But as ancient Israel turned away from her God and his ways, so too has America. The city on the hill, founded for the purpose and glory of God, drove God out of its government, out of its culture, out of its public squares. It celebrated ungodliness and called evil good and good evil. It lifted up the most innocent and helpless of its inhabitants and slaughtered them on the altars of self-obsession. The last time we gathered here on this hill was the day after the Supreme Court heard the case to decide the future of marriage in this nation. Two months after we gathered here, America's highest court struck down the order of God and the day on which it did was the 9th of Tammuz, the ancient day of mourning 
that commemorates the day that Israel's hedge of protection was removed in the approach of judgment. And so it must be asked this day, Supreme Court justices, where did you get the authority to overrule the rulings of the Most High? And by what authority did you strike down the laws of the Almighty? You are neither the highest court nor the final authority. There is a supreme judge with a supreme justice that does not sleep forever. And Mr. President, when you assumed the office of your presidency, did you not lay your hand on the word of God and swear before him, so help me God? And yet on the day that the Supreme Court struck down the order of God, you issued the order that the White House be illumined by the colors of the rainbow to celebrate that striking down. Mr. President, by what authority did you take the sacred colors of God's covenant, the colors of his throne, and the sign of his mercy in the face of judgment and turn them against the purposes of God and the word of God on which you swore your oath? I'm glad. I'm glad that somebody is taking a stand on God's Absolutely. word. Absolutely. I think we as Americans need to follow suit and start yeah. taking a stand on what we know is right. I have a scripture here I want to read. And I think uh, this is important because it's important to me. It convicted me when God showed this to me. And it's, you, will, you always hear in elections, choose the lesser of the evils. But I think evil is such a, a wide-reaching term, and it, and it pushes the problem away from you. I think the better way of looking at it is, what is the greater sin? So I want to read this, this scripture. It's in John 19, 11. And basically, Pilate is before Jesus, and he says, you know, why aren't you saying anything? Petition me. You know, I have the power to destroy you. And Jesus is saying, you would have no power at all over me unless it were given to you from above. Therefore, he who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Mm. So the person who handed Jesus over to Pilate really was Judas in the end. And Judas was a believer. Pilate was a, was a Gentile leader and he was in that position. But Judas was the believer and he walked with Jesus and he knew that he was the Messiah. So Judas knew better. Yeah. Judas mm. knew better. Jews, and that's why better. his sin was greater. So now we're in this scenario wow. where the people of the world are going to always act like people of the world. Sinners sin. And so they have different convictions and different ideas than, than believers do because they don't have the mind of Christ. They have a reprobate mind. So as far as they know, they're doing what they know exactly. is right. Wow. So what do we do? Do we give up the fight and just say, have the election, choose whoever you want, we're done fighting? No, because wow. we know better. Mm. We are believers. We have the mind of Christ. So if we just give up the election, who has the greater mm. sin? Mm. The unbelievers who, as far as they know, are doing what they know is right? Or the believers who can make an impact, who can do something about it, but decide that they don't want to? Yeah. Absolutely. And that's why it's so important. As I said earlier, we've been talking to different people that think that maybe, oh, well, since this side is evil or this side is evil, I'm just going to take a back seat. Mm -hmm. But right now is your chance. In these upcoming elections, this is your chance to be heard. This is your voice being out there. And this is your stance. Because as these times start getting darker, you're going to have to take a stance because these issues are going to keep getting bigger in your face saying, what do you stand for? Do you stand for the right side or do you stand for the other side? And when those, uh, you're faced with those decisions, you're going to have to make a choice. And so as you keep moving forward, make the choice in these upcoming elections to vote for the person that you know is going to at least stand for what you believe in, that's going to make these changes, changes back for America, back into God's hands. Because right now, we are facing a very critical time in American history, and we don't want to turn our back on God. That's and right. that's where we have to know that as long as we can put our faith in God, continue to pray, pray for revival. But at the same time, put your vote where it counts. Amen. You know, as we wrap up the show today, one thing that we just kind of, to be eternally minded, I look forward to the day where I'm serving in a monarchy. Me too. Where Jesus <laughs> is the king and he's the supreme ruler of the entire world. That is never, we're going to have a perfect king of the land. You're never going to have a perfect president. You're never going to have a perfect pastor, preacher, or elder of the church. The only time we're going to have a perfect leader is during the millennial reign and then for all of eternity under Jesus' rule. 
That's this right. whole life right here, it, it, it is sometimes easy to get caught up in everything. But just always remember that, well, the book, uh, the book of James refers to this life as but a vapor. Mm-hmm. We're here for a little while and then we're gone. The moment of conception, we became eternal beings. One day you and I are literally going to be millions and millions and millions of years old. If you're a fundamental believer and you believe the word of God, you and I are one day going to be millions and millions of years old. And we're going to have the cognitive reasoning skills to understand that it's just begun. Wow. You know, have you look at it like that, do you realize, okay, well, let's make good decisions. Let's make Jesus decisions while we're here. But I always keep in mind that this world means absolutely nothing. At the same time, it means absolutely everything. Because it's what you decide here that determines where you spend forever and all of eternity for. It says in the word of God that we're all going to bow down and confess that Jesus is Lord. But the trick is to do that on this side of heaven. It might seem like a little overwhelming in America today or the world, and it's going to become increasingly overwhelming as we enter more into the end times. That's why we've got to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Remember that the temporary suffering that we experience here does not compare of the glory of what's coming. Well, this has been Revelation in the News. We'll see you next week.